good mom, caring, like always there for us. Georgia Baldwin raised three boys on a hairdresser's salary. Me and her on her birthday, you always try to make sure we stop by on her birthdays. But then the voices took over. She was not well. You could have a conversation with her and nothing she would say would make sense. Hi, it's Georgia Baldwin again, Justine. If you're working today on this Labor Day holiday, why I'm living with nothing. Welcome to the most hits out for life. It's hard, you know? She began making phone calls to an Arlington police spokesman. The governor of Mississippi needs to blow you away. I want you dead like no other. These messages got her arrested on a terroristic threat charge in April 2021. She was booked into the Tarrant County Jail. Jail was no place for her. She needed help. Baldwin had been locked up five months when she died of severe hypernatremia, a condition generally caused by not drinking enough water. She was 52. The jail might ask, well, should a jail really be responsible to assure that somebody's drinking enough water? And my answer to that is if you choose to incarcerate instead of get help for a severely mentally ill person, then yes, that's your obligation. But Georgia Baldwin wasn't the only Tarrant County prisoner to die from thirst. WFA found two other cases of people locked up who died of dehydration. Records show that in all three deaths, each prisoner had severe documented mental illness. And in all three cases, each prisoner had ready access to water, but they were apparently too sick to know they needed it. I mean, if it's one, it's an outlier, two might be a coincidence, but, it, but when you have three, it's a pattern. This is Abdullahi Muhammad. He was arrested in the summer of 2020. He was diagnosed as bipolar manic and had previously been to a state mental hospital. Jailer started a food log after realizing he wasn't eating. On the same day they started that food log in June 2020, Tarrant County jailers found him lying on a mattress on the floor nude. An uneaten tray of food sat just feet away. This video shows emergency medical workers attempting to revive him. He died at the hospital. The Texas Rangers investigated and found no wrongdoing by jailers. The investigator wrote, inmates always have access to water inside their cells. There was no data collected on how much water Muhammad had consumed. You have cold water, hot water, toilet flush, and a water fountain. Earlier this year, Chief Deputy Charles Eckert showed us the combination water fountain and toilet in each cell. The Sheriff's Department can't hold people down and force water into their mouth. They have to make the conscious choice to walk over to the sink and drink water. Simply providing water in a cell is not adequate when you have somebody with serious mental illness. Psychiatrist Eric Reinhardt studies deaths in jails and prisons. If somebody has a serious mental illness, a very common symptom is fear of contamination and specifically fear of being poisoned by food or liquids. Georgia Baldwin also had a water fountain and sink in her jail cell. This is what it looked like. Her family says she was too mentally ill to care for herself or realize that she needed water. She, like so many other mentally ill people, doesn't keep her clothes on a lot of the time. Her cell's a mess. She doesn't want to shower. A judge found Georgia incompetent to stand trial and ordered her transferred to a state mental hospital. But here's the other big problem. The wait for beds is months, sometimes more than a year. So she remained in the Tarrant County Jail for months. Her deterioration is documented in jailer's sworn statements. One testifying she saw Georgia playing in feces and talking to herself. She thinks there's some international ring of people that are after her, all of which demonstrate clearly to everyone in the jail that she's got issues. In September 2021, jailers found her near death on the floor of her cell. She later died at a hospital. Georgia couldn't pick up the phone and say, hey, I'd really like to be transferred to an appropriate mental health facility or, or get better treatment. Tarrant County had to do it. Edgar Villatoro Alvarez also died of dehydration at the jail. He was diagnosed as bipolar. A mental health worker noted during one visit that he was naked, upset, and not cooperative. On the day he died in February 2022, a jailer would later write, he appeared to be deteriorating and his behavior was odd compared to his usual temperament. Jailers recorded the failed effort to revive him. The medical examiner wrote Alvarez recently ceased eating, drinking, and taking his medications for the last several days. 
It sounds like the response of the people at Tarrant County Jail is to expect the people in their custody to behave as they themselves would. So how can this happen, dying of thirst with water within reach? In depositions in Georgia Baldwin's case, two mental health workers at the jail testified they rely on guards to let them know when a mentally ill prisoner isn't drinking water. I see you move. Thank you. But jailers also said they don't monitor water intake of prisoners and aren't trained to recognize signs of dehydration. You okay? Chief Deputy Charles Eckert testified the three deaths aren't a concern as long as we provide water to them. From what I have reviewed, we violated no jail standards. We did our checks. But experts say jails should monitor water intake just as they would in a psychiatric hospital. That is now their job. County Sheriff in the U.S., you are the administrator in part of a psychiatric hospital. The last thing my mom needed was to be thrown in a cell. Baldwin's son kept the tools of his mother's hairdressing trade. It always felt weird whenever she was cutting my hair with these, so. They remind him of better times. I can only imagine what was going through her mind during that time. And I just wish I would have gotten the chance to say goodbye or do something to be there to see her. In Fort Worth, I'm Tanya Iser.